Hello and welcome to our daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. This is our 23rd in the series of Gems from Isaiah. You know, ever since I saw that I was going to get Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11, I've been thinking about it and praying because how do you do justice to these great words? They're so wonderful. So I thought we'd just read them together. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. And all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Such a mark changed from the past six readings where we're looking at historical narrative. And indeed, this chapter marks a real change because up until chapter 39, Isaiah has been speaking to the events of his own day. He's been in the temple at the aqueduct in Hezekiah's palace. Beginning at this chapter, we look forward 80 to 130 years in the future to the Babylonian exile and beyond. So this has led some people to say these chapters aren't Isaiah's prophecies, but someone writing in his style. Hang on I'm a minute, I say, for what Isaiah prophesies undoubtedly comes true. Babylon did take the people into exile. And 50 years after the first deportation, Cyrus of Persia defeated the Babylonians and allowed the exiles to return and rebuild Jerusalem. Let's look what Habakkuk says about what to do with prophecy. In chapter 2 and verses 2 to 3, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. It's great, isn't it, that these faithful prophets obeyed God and wrote down what he told them. For Habakkuk looks forward to the gospel with his great words, the righteous shall live by faith. And Isaiah looks forward to Jesus, not just his coming, but his death for our sins on the cross, his resurrection and his return in glory. So let's return to our reading and which I'm following Alec Motya by calling it the Song of the Heralds. Verses one and two are like an introduction. God is giving a command. His beloved people are in great need of comfort, real meaningful comfort that they have been through so much. Here we see the father heart of God, tender and personal. And we are reminded that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. 
The God of all comfort knows what we have all been through and will speak tenderly to us all. He reassures us that our sins have been forgiven and we know this is so through the death of Jesus on the cross. But we still live in a sin-affected world and if you particularly need comfort from God today, draw near to him and he will draw near to you and he sends you three heralds. The first herald brings news of the coming of the Lord in glory, verses three to five. Now, when the captives of Judah were taken to Babylon, they were led in a victory parade through the great gates, enough to make you gasp at their splendour. But God says he plans to come in glory too. John the Baptist took up this role to herald the way for Jesus. And one day all people will see the glory of the Lord and every knee will bow. When it gets tough for us, let's remember the Lord of glory is in control and take comfort. The second herald brings news of the Lord of the eternal word in verses six to eight. Here is the clear picture of the difference between ourselves and the Lord. We are beautiful, but only for a moment. We are so finite. And when God's spirit blows over us, that is the end of our days on earth. God, however, speaks forever. His voice will never be stilled. His spirit will always be active. And this comforts us as we, he says to us, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. The third herald, herald speaking in verses nine to 11, speaks of the Lord as a strong and capable shepherd. First Jerusalem and then the towns around are told, here is your God. Today we live at a time when people aren't so much against God as think he's not really relevant. No, the herald said, here, is your God. He is strong and in control. He has gifts to give. He wants to ransom, heal, restore and forgive. He provides. He's tender, holding lambs close to his heart. He is gentle and sets a pace we can follow. If this sounds like Jesus to you, then it is because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So God sends us three heralds to comfort us. He's the Lord of glory and there's none like that, him. He's the Lord of the eternal word and his promises will never fail. He is the strong shepherd for our souls. Enjoy his glory, trust in his words and allow the shepherd to look after you today and always. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord of all, that you are the God of all comfort, real comfort, who meets us where we are and speaks tenderly to us. Thank you that there is no one like you, a God who keeps his word to the end and of whom we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. Be with those who need a special touch from yourself today. Send your heralds to comfort them and lift them up, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you, whatever you're about to do next. And I pray that you I may see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>